In this video, I'm going to do the impossible. I'm going to do what the socialists, the people who insist that universal health care is the only way, insist just can't be done. I'm going to tell you how to fix the U.S. health care system without spending a single dime. Here's the first thing you have to understand. Although just uttering this sentence will make the dogmatists immediately close their ears and start flaming in the comments. We don't have a health care problem in this country. No one complains about the quality or the amount of health care, only how much it costs. That makes it an economic issue, not a health care issue, and it needs to be attacked from that angle. Here are the solutions. If you live in New York and you find this really great insurance policy from a Wisconsin company that has the coverage you want at a great price, you are prohibited by law from buying it. Both state and federal laws stop insurance companies from competing across state lines. We've got our president complaining that a lot of insurance policies aren't really insurance policies because they don't cover doctor's visits. But that's like saying your car insurance isn't car insurance because it doesn't cover oil changes. Insurance is there to cover uncommon major events that people can't afford to pay out of normal income and savings. Real health insurance is high deductible major medical. The plans the president is talking about are really expensive prepayment schemes and they only exist because of corporate welfare regulations. All of this is the reason why insurance is so expensive. What your insurance policy covers should be up to you, not some politician who doesn't care the first thing about you or your family. This is a clear violation of the Commerce Clause, and I mean by what it really says, not what the government has twisted it to mean. It's also insane. Why do single males need maternity coverage? Why mandate infertility coverage for couples that don't want children? Why mandate alcohol rehab for non-drinkers like me? All of the things that your insurance covers that you will never use drives up the price of your policy. Some of these even mandate the coverage of things like chiropractic and acupuncture. Someone try and defend that. A 2008 study done for the Department of Health and Human Services shows that allowing consumers to bypass state-imposed corporate welfare mandates would make health insurance affordable for more than 11 million Americans, and it wouldn't cost a dime of taxpayer money. Also, the RAND health insurance experiment for the Department of Health and Human Services showed that those same prepayment plans President Obama prefers used substantially more health care than those who had the kind of high deductible plans the president dislikes, with little to no difference in health care outcomes between the two groups. Instead of being forced into a Cadillac plan, you should be able to choose your own plan based on what you need and eliminating what you don't need saving money not only for yourself, but for others as well. This will increase choice and lower cost for the consumers. If the Republicans really believe in the free market, like they claim, and if the Democrats really cared about your health costs, like they claim, they would be working to allow companies to offer a range of policies at a variety of prices, not dictating what companies can and cannot offer to consumers. I want someone out there to give me a good, rational reason for not doing this. A business can do this. Why not you? This would allow millions of Americans to afford insurance who currently cannot. And while we're at it, repeal completely the cap on health care deductions. Again, give me one good reason for not doing this. Whenever you mention problems with the FDA, people become horrified. After all, doesn't the FDA stop unsafe drugs from entering the market? But remember your Bastiat. Consider both the seen and the unseen. You see the dangerous drugs that make it to market. You don't see the lives lost by delaying the entry for the good drugs. Propranolol, the first beta blocker, was available in Europe for three years before the FDA approved it here. 
Propranolol ended up saving about 10,000 lives a year. According to a study by Arthur D. Little, if it had been available here at the same time it had been in Europe, an additional 30,000 lives would have been saved. That means that 30,000 people were killed by FDA delays. That's probably a lot more than they've saved by keeping dangerous drugs off the market, just from this one drug. And it doesn't end there. 22,000 were killed who would have been saved by streptokinase. Over 8,000 lives were lost waiting for misoprostol. And the five-year delay in approving SEPTRA cost over 80,000 lives. Here's the silly thing. For most of this delay time, the drug has already been determined to be safe. Most of the time it's been testing for efficacy, not safety. Yet the government won't even let dying people take a drug that has already been tested to be safe because they don't know how effective it will be. But these patients and their doctors know how effective their disease will be. It'll kill them. Withholding the drug at this point is tantamount to murder. Not only that, the FDA is the reason pharmaceuticals are so expensive. It can cost hundreds of millions of dollars just to get a single drug approved. A lot of that goes directly to the FDA itself and comprises half its budget for drug evaluation. And the 10 to 15 year delay not only means that lives are lost in the interim, it means when they do get introduced, there's only a few years left on the patent. So the drug companies jack up the price, trying to make back those fantastic costs before generics come on the market. Most drugs are money losers. But wait, what about those reports of ungodly profits by the pharmaceutical industry? If you look closely, they say something like an average of the top company's profits. In other words, they're cherry-picked. According to Fortune magazine, the median profit for a pharmaceutical company is just 18%. The broadcast media that loves to complain about this enjoys profits of 46% or more. But wait, isn't Canada's system better? Don't they pay less for drugs? This is more cherry-picking. They pay less for some drugs because of price caps, but they pay more than we do for generics. In fact, a lot of Canadians come to the U.S. to buy drugs. Tonstoffel. So how would it work if it were private? Just look at UL, the underwriters' laboratories. Their seal of approval is on almost every electrical device you own, as well as many other products. For over a century, they've been testing and certifying products as being safe for consumers. Retailers such as Walmart or Target insist on such a certification for every such item they stock. Some local building codes even require approval by UL or an equivalent organization for a lot of the materials used. UL has an excellent track record, and they get their testing done quickly. If they don't, the companies will just go with one of their many competitors. Some people say the privatization might make the FDA beholden to the pharmaceutical interests, but that's already happened. According to a report in the Washington Post, the FDA acts very carefully not to upset its corporate sponsors, which again provide half its budget for drug evaluation. But UL doesn't have that problem. In fact, it's one of the least corrupt organizations there has ever been. The corruption that people are so afraid of happens with government, not the free market. Here's another silly thing. People look at the deaths caused by the bad drugs, like Baycol or Vioxx, which are rarely anywhere near as bad as the media makes them out to be, and blames the pharmaceutical companies. But the FDA, who approved these drugs, gets none of the blame whatsoever for letting them through. When the FDA screws up, it doesn't get sued, it doesn't go out of business, and no one at the agency is held accountable. UL, on the other hand, is accountable. You can sue them if a UL certified product ends up hurting you. The benefits of doing this are enormous, and it's hard to see any drawbacks at all. And not only would it not cost taxpayers a dime, it would actually save them the $3.2 billion operating budget of the FDA. Lower taxes, safer drugs, and more drugs available at lower prices. It's win, win, win. Did you know that the government gave the AMA monopoly power, making them the only organization in the country capable of granting medical license? The reason why was that healthcare was too cheap, and the AMA lobbied Congress to give them a monopoly, so they could limit the number of licenses given, reducing the supply of doctors, thus increasing the amount doctors get paid. 
This was ostensibly done to save the healthcare system from bankruptcy. In reality, it's just another government monopoly that makes things more expensive for you. Now, you won't find any slip of paper that legally says, only the AMA can license physicians. It's sneakier than that. They lobby Congress to pass favorable laws and lobby the states to have the state licensing board stuffed full of AMA members, even though they only represent a minority of doctors. The result is that American doctors make an average of $200,000 to $300,000 a year, increasing to $400,000 or more for specialists. By comparison, doctors in Europe make between $60,000 and $120,000 a year. This is one big reason that Europe spends less on health care than we do. Is the AMA the only group on the planet who can possibly license physicians? What, were they specially ordained by God? Were they sent here from the planet Krypton and given special powers from Earth's yellow sun? I'm not saying eliminate or break up the AMA. Just take away their monopoly power and allow other organizations to license physicians. Once again, this will save you money and not cost a dime of taxpayer money. So can anyone give me a rational reason for not doing this? Health savings accounts should allow individuals to save on taxes and build up enough money to cover medical expenses when they occur. This would put them in greater control of their health care choices. They should also be able to use it to pay insurance premiums, which you can't do right now, and you should get every penny of the interest. Right now, millions of Americans are completely dependent on their employers for health insurance. This not only removes their choice of insurance companies, it also reduces the ability of workers to change jobs in order to improve their own financial situation. According to the Towers Watson 2009 Healthcare Cost Survey, corporations on average spend around $800 a month for their employees' health benefits. Make no mistake, that is $800 a month that would have gone to you otherwise. Your employer subtracted that amount when your pay was set. What if they could put that money into a health savings account, and you could use that money to buy your own health insurance? You might find a really good plan that covers what you need for $400 a month, or even less if we get competition back into the insurance industry, and that would mean that the other $400 will stay in the account collecting interest, which you can use toward your deductible or anything else the insurance plan doesn't cover. Your health insurance company and plan should be your choice, not your employers, and not some bureaucrats either. Again, this could easily be done without government spending a dime. And again, if you can think of any rational reason not to do this, let's hear it. Congress could do these things anytime they wanted, without costing the taxpayers a dime. You would be the customer. Not your employer, not your insurance company, and not the government. You would be in charge. You would determine what is needed. You would determine what is a fair price. Doctors, hospitals, and insurance companies would have to compete for your business. Inevitably, this would lower prices dramatically while increasing quality, with no waiting lists or other forms of rationing, and no dramatic increase in unfunded liabilities. Lower prices. Better quality. More choices. All without costing the taxpayers a single penny? Again, give me a good, solid, logical, rational reason for not doing it. The insurance companies don't want that. The healthcare lobbyists don't want that. The pharmaceutical companies don't want that. Barack Obama doesn't want that. But I hate to break this to you, but they don't care about you. They're not doing these things because, even though all of us stand to gain under them, they themselves would lose. If you're still in favor of your pet government health care solution, then at least give me one good reason for not trying all of this first. Why not try it and see what happens and go from there? Especially since that none of this involves applying force. In fact, it removes force. None of it involves taxation. In fact, it greatly reduces the financial burden of individuals and families. None of it reduces anyone's choice. In fact, it increases everyone's choice. So give me one good, rationally defensible reason for not doing it. Let's take our health care back from the profit mongers, both in corporations and in government. <music>